Hey guys, welcome to No Tux Allowed, where we got a super spicy episode at, at towards the end of this here. So uh, I do highly recommend that uh, you stick around, and if you're watching the video version on YouTube, watch the video version. If, if you're uh, listening to this on, on the same day that we released the episode, the YouTube typically uploads a little bit later in the week. But I, we'll, if it we processes it. correctly, but yeah, that, that it, we solve potentially. Yeah, uh, which, but if we do manage to get there, there's definitely going to be a time link for you <laughs> because it's, it's we're we're having a lot of fun with this. But anyways, I'm your host Josh. It's nice to meet you guys, and of course, uh, you already heard him. We have the great, the famous Big Pod. Hello, uh, Big Pod. Uh, first of all. Uh, I found out something today that I haven't known for like years now because I've never known you in an employed state. Yeah. Uh, I heard that you finally got a job. Yeah. <laughs> I I know work again and that's good. That is that is a good thing. So uh hopefully I don't uh which you know uh, it's not like you were you were completely out of money, but you know it I I'm just glad you were able to get something. Yeah. But anyways, if you, if you haven't been able to tell by my English so far, I'm an American, so uh, I only know so much. But yeah. apparently, Switzerland has decided that they just don't want to... That they just think that they are a nation made up of the people, for the people. I don't know if they're by the people, but you know they're at least trying to be for the people. And uh, they have decided that they're going to switch to using exclusively open source software. Nice. And... Yeah. Just for those of you who do not know, Switzerland is one of few countries in Europe who isn't in the European Union, or which, let's use proper English, which isn't in the European Union. I think, or is, or is, or am I thinking of another organization? I think you're thinking of another one because uh, I know that they historically weren't, but I think they did apply to join the EU. Uh, let's see. Switzerland is not member state of EU, so I was right. I, I, I oh, wasn't. Okay. <clears throat> I wasn't thinking of another organization, which I know they are part of the the one that starts with an N and ends with an O. Yeah, yeah. And US uh, is also so part of. This boils down to one. Yeah. So uh, there's a link to the to this law, to this law that I have. Uh, but I'm. But uh, I'm going to include like this uh, Europa.eu uh, link instead because uh, I can't read French <laughs> or German did... or Italian. Let's be clear. Yeah. So, but I did include that link for for anybody that can or is willing to hit the translate button on their web browser. But uh, it's got a couple. Uh, it it's actually a pretty interesting read, and yeah. uh, honestly, I think that. They're they're taking a very common sense approach to this, and uh, they've even taken the, they've even taken a minute to actually define open source. So there's actually a legal definition for what open source is, and not just a certification. Yeah. Which, hey, I'm all for that because you know if we can actually describe what open source software is, <clears throat> that's that's better than what we're dealing with right now. Because what we're dealing with right now is which definition of open source are we using? Are we using OSIs? Are we using the per? Are we using the person that doesn't understand how licensing works, or are we using like this other random organization, or are we using Fudo's definition of what open source is? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but uh, I, uh, every path leads to our final potential topic. In my yeah, mind, went yeah. there uh, right away when he said Fudo. <laughs> 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 Which, uh, if you don't know, if you don't know who Fudo is, uh, there's a YouTuber called Lewis Rossman. Watch his stuff, and you'll figure it out pretty quick. Yeah. But anyways, it's basically uh, an organization that has software, like fair software, basically not open source, but fair of some sort. Yeah. And there we go. An another YouTuber, YouTuber, YouTuber shout out that we do not get uh, sponsored by or or oh, shouted oh, of out course. by. I mean, welcome what, to No Talks Allowed. Yep, welcome to No Talks Allowed, where we talk about all the other YouTubers when we're smaller YouTubers. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the open source definition is in Article Nine of of uh, the, the law, and it's got a it's got only six points to it, so it's short, relatively relatively uh, straightforward. And uh, but 
I would like to cover. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it does say that there's a catch to this open source. But the think? lost it. Well, there kind of is, kind of is, but it, it's a it's a common sense one when you think about it. But it says that the law stipulates that all public bodies must disclose the source code of the software by or for them unless precluded by third party rights or security concerns. So, like, if there's like a random C file out there that's going to like uh, completely like break an entire system or cause race conditions that uh, allow for, like root privileges they could theoretically just not publish the source code yeah which i guess makes some sense because we're talking we're talking about the thing that runs your government <laughs> so uh, we're talking yeah. about like your government's document server or their ft the uh ftp server that you know they distributed all the all the legal forms from and stuff <clears throat> like that so i guess that does make some sense but yeah I don't know, uh, it's, they need to, the person who got the idea that also needs to cover their ass. And yeah, that's and what it is. And the IT person, let's be honest, we understand them. They need to cover their ass if something goes wrong. Yeah, or so they cannot not... solve it in a better way. Yeah, and honestly, this is like the common sense approach. I understand that uh, it would be great if they just published everything. But, you know, uh, there there comes a point in time where it's just like, we have to realize that uh, these are people. <laughs> yeah, uh, we need to take a pragmatic approach, not a uh, uh, approach of a zealot. Yep. But th that's pretty. That's pretty cool that uh, Switzerland's moving in that direction, and yeah. uh, hopefully we can start to see <coughs> that like actually spread. Because you know, I'm here in the United States, and like uh, Microsoft is huge in our government. Like. Uh, to the point where I believe the white whitehouse.gov actually uses a Windows server. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's either Microsoft or it's Red Hat. So uh, take pick take your pick. Uh, I either way, not two companies that are that not everybody particularly enjoys. I much prefer Red Hat to Microsoft, but uh, at at the same time, it's just like uh, yeah, there's been some issues com coming from both uh, in the past couple of years. Yeah. And uh, it, I, I honestly think that my taxpayer dollars should not be going to Microsoft. <laughs> they should be. be g and, uh, you know, when I go to like my t when I go to like my local village's website, that is not that should not be distri distributed to me over a Windows XP computer, because that's actually what it is. <laughs> Yeah, security. But anyways, uh, yeah. Now that we got the feel good story, Big Pod, there's a bit of a hilarious situation that you mentioned to me going on in Slovenia. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, uh, that's gonna be, uh, probably recurring recurring uh, uh, part of the episode called Story Time with Big Pod. So let's get into this one. So. In Slovenia, we have this uh, basically get get Slovenia digitally transformed ministry, Ministry of Digital Transformation, essentially, and they decided to basically order thirteen thousand laptops, around thirteen thousand laptops. They are basically at the time they were they weren't the newest laptops, and that was one point of contention since thirteen gen. CPUs were by Intel were released, and 12th gen, and they were with 12th gen CPU. So they were they were by media described as ancient and old and things like that, which is funny to me because isn't isn't there basically the difference between 12th gen and 13th gen what is etched on the CPU? I think that there actually is some hardware differences. I think twelfth, I think twelfth gen being Otter Lake is actually. I think they ca they carried a tenth and eleventh gen, and then twelfth gen is when they introduced like the big little yeah. architecture. So yeah. there there is a different 
there is some different differences in the actual hardware of the chip. But then 13th but, gen, how much better was 13th gen from 12th gen? 13th gen, 13th gen is 12th gen. Just yes. Slightly improved Better. a little bit with a different label on it, and then 14th gen is basically the same thing as well. Yes. Uh, so basically, what what it yeah. means is you you might have a better battery life. Probably that's what yeah. it is, and maybe a bit uh, better turbo. But on laptops, which at the same time, at the same time, I have this, I have this wonderful laptop here behind me, this ThinkPad. It's got a 10th gen CPU in it, and when it comes to battery life, I'm still getting like 10 hours, which. I think is perfectly reasonable. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, our production, main part of our production is run on my my uh, laptop. My tw- 11 gen laptop. Yeah. So, yeah. Why not? And it's a pretty good laptop. And you know, it it's got it's got it's an Intel CPU, so it's got like that that uh it's got that uh quick sync media encoder. So, a lot of the tasks that you're using the laptop for on a desktop use case, do, is it really hitting the CPU to begin with? <laughs> no. <laughs> Which, it's not. It's not a bad performer either. Yeah. It only it only takes six hours to compile Chromium on this laptop. It's that's pretty actually pretty good. A couple <laughs> and, of years and that's ago. An it, it, yeah. <laughs> it will take a lot longer. But actually, Which, this is not where our story. Hits the hits the crescendo for us Linux nerds. Yes, it gets spicier. <laughs> so, over time, this laptop sat in the in actual like warehouse. They didn't know how to give them out to who, to by what criteria. They had to tell uh, had to basically iron out those criteria. First, they wanted to just get laptops. Then they would hire another criteria. Standard garment stuff. Mm-hmm. But. But then they're a couple of years old, but they're still pretty good laptop. They're 12 gen Intel. I don't know what's wrong with them. <laughs> but where it gets really interesting for us Linux nerds is one person finally got their hands on one of these laptops. And when when they turned it on, you know what was on it? Pop OS! And what was... And now, now that is the main contention point. Should it be Linux on it? Or should it be Windows? So, these, uh, these laptops are mainly targeted at students from lower income families. So, they would be given for free to such students. So, they could have a computer they could do work on for school, whether it be presentations where it be research and so on very very good idea very noble idea in my opinion something that we should something that we should strive for since it's a digital enabler and very perfect use for linux in my opinion yeah but there is the contention by public by certain parts of the public really that linux shouldn't be used on such laptops because things like adobe Things like AutoCAD, things like Microsoft Office, they don't work on l- this kind of laptop. And now I ask myself uh, that why would a laptop or like a, a laptop that is for lesser, uh, less income students, should it come with Windows? That's 100 hundred two hundred euro that just went down the toilet for that that crappy windows install but you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to pay that money now it would have to come with office then because what computer don't come with office Th- there goes 300 euro per laptop i mean there's student go they're gonna use license. office yeah yeah there uh, is so some sort of that's, office. that's gonna be a batch of licenses that's gonna be 50 dollars per student as well uh if no, you're paying the try, try so. bigger because you you probably don't want to give them the 365 license. You probably want to give them a perpetual license so it is tied to a laptop. Oh, that, that's true. That's, that's true. 300 they, they got, euros. Yeah, that's that's uh, three, 300 euros, which roughly translates to like 600 something US, may, no, maybe a little bit less. Uh, say, I about don't... same. It's about same. It's yeah. uh, uh, 302 dollars. <laughs> Basically, there is like 
they're basically equivalent. Yeah. Uh, either way, it's uh, not going to be cheap but just for the, Office. At this and point, pay... we're already talking about 400 euros in Windows and Office. Let's be clear. Laptops were like 600 euros per. Yeah. Based on my calculations. Yeah. In the meantime, these laptops are shipping with Populous, which I believe pre-installs LibreOffice. Yeah, which can or it's output really easy to install, and they yeah. and the administrator can install them. The person who pre prepped these laptops, why not? Yeah, which I'll be honest with you, I don't see students actually opening the actual Office programs. They're just using Google Docs. Oh, yeah, they're going most, to be using Google most Docs. of what I've most of what I've seen. And it's just like, yeah, that's fine. In Slovenia, maybe not as much because a lot of schools aren't that tied to Google, but many of them are still. So yeah. for Good. those, yeah, like let's be let's be honest. What OS is preferred to us in U.S. schools that, that uh, U.S. and Canada schools that are, that now require that now ask for the, that uh, child or student brings a laptop with them? What OS is preferred? Usually, it's just whatever boots a web browser. <laughs> yes, and a lot of them ask from what I read, ask for Chrome OS laptops, which makes sense because uh, Google subsidize does subsidize Chrome, uh, the Chrome OS laptops for schools. Yes, so they're effectively getting free laptops. Like, if if school gives out a laptop, it's a Chrome OS laptop. It's a cr Chromebook. Yeah, that's what which, I always read for US. You know what that means? They are running Linux. For one and two, they're running a web browser, nothing else. And they're not just running Linux; they're running a modified Gen two Linux. Yes. So all the so uh, yes, Chrome OS is based off of Gen two. Uh, it so and yes, you can unlock Portage on Chrome OS if you really, really want to. And that's the point I'm trying to get to. Like, what do you need? You need a browser, and you need a browser, and potentially you might need LibreOffice, and maybe something like. Uh, Caden Live, GIMP. A lot of schools in Slovenia, you learn image manipulation on GIMP. Yeah, because GIMP's free and school doesn't have yeah. to pay for it. So uh, if they're just going to be using GIMP anyway. GIMP. I actually find that GIMP works better on Linux than it does Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. And uh, that's what I learned. I and I was in. Uh, once I went out of primary school, I was I was in vocational school for for computer science for IT so I was on a more directed track towards uh, programming computer repair and stuff like that and we still learned that on GIMP yeah and it makes sense because w when you're in the school you probably shouldn't be tying yourself into like the Adobe <clears throat> or like the AutoCADs instead you just need to learn well, like the concepts of what the tool does well that, I did that, learn with writing on Premiere Pro Let's be honest. Yeah, which but I, I understand. Mainly, I understand was... like, so I understand like the video editing workflow in Premiere Pro is pretty different from Canon Live. But yeah. if you're a student going through school, there are con they share concepts. Yes. You're doing cuts. You're yes. doing transitions. You're doing effects. All the all the school should have to teach you is that those things it's exist. Those, yes, basics. And they That's don't have they teach to teach you. you yeah, and they don't have to teach you the tool. It goes for, like, Office, too. It's just like, yeah. yes, proper... What is editing a Word file? It's formatting. Yes. That's it. All you have to do is just learn how to format a letter <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> or, like, figure out how to format a list. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know... Or make an make, uh, make a, make a, uh, index. Stuff yeah, like that. And, uh, I, I remember, like, uh, going through school and, like, making PowerPoints, which, you know, LibreOffice works for that, too. Like, uh, I don't in, know, in college. To, to export to PDF and you have, and you have, where, and anywhere it works, PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, why do they have to use Windows? Oh, it's because it's what the administrator knows. No, it's what, what what that person that was that got the hands on the laptop knows. But returning to the topic of Premiere Pro for a second, reason I got so used to Premiere Pro is actually because I was taught of Premiere Pro because I used it 
on extracurricular activities at school. We had a multimedia interest group and there I used Premiere Pro to edit some stuff. That's where I got that because th then I was using more advanced things and I would do doing things all the time. Which which that makes sense. Like uh there That's a semi professional ever, environment then. If if you're going to be like talk if you're gonna have like special specialized interest groups, that's where it makes sense to have like a more dedicated piece of hardware. So that's yeah. where you can put Windows. Yeah. Like uh, you could put Windows there, or you know, just buy an Apple device and just put yeah. Final Cut on it. Yeah, we we had mix of both. And yeah. that's the thing that then of course uh, the the person who got the laptop was like, uh, like you cannot because you cannot find software, you cannot the students or or people who will get these laptops won't be able to do things with them like play games and like okay. install certain software. Okay. Uh, so, you can play games. Now, they're using Pop! OS, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's this tool called the Pop! Shop, which yeah. runs, and Pop! OS pre-installs Flatpak, and pre-set, and pre-configures Flathub for you. Uh, that's a thing that it yeah. just does. And, and Flathub has, like, 700 plus games on it. Yeah. Including and Minecraft. Steam. And Steam. Uh, it it has Steam, which Steam is huge. It's huge on Linux. Let's be clear, I mean, huge on Linux. Yeah. Huge on Linux, and then you've also got the Heroic Games launcher, launcher, so you can get you can get your uh, your uh, more proper video games dep depending the, on who the you Epic, are. Epic brand, yeah, the video games. Uh, it supports Epic and like some other storefronts too. I think it yeah. supports Epic and GOG primarily. Yeah, the main thing. Yeah. Or you know, you could just default. Or you know, you could just be a savage and just use Luchers, which just supports everything. Yeah. <laughs> but now that you mentioned Pop Shop, that's another thing th uh, they didn't like. Oh. Because on Linux, apparently it's hard to install software. It's hard to open up Pop Shop and hit a button that says install. Yes, that's the thing. That's what I want to mention. That to to these young users who might never have actually held a held a computer in their hand that would be their own or had very little experience with such with their own computers but they probably still had a phone they're used to they using have a phone they a shop. have a, they have an app store i mean they have, if uh, they uh, own an iphone a phone they they will know the concept of app store yeah uh, in fact uh, us Linux people, we can be a champion here. We had the graphical GUI for an app store first. Yes. Like, <laughs> for them, we're much closer in the idea of how to install software because you have an app store and you're done. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess if you're, like, you're a Windows Power user, you've probably never opened up the micro the, yes. um, the Windows Store, which but props actually, to you. Uh, it's, it's relatively good nowadays. I yeah. wouldn't say no to it these days. I mean, but I yeah. just uh, last time I was using Windows Windows computer, I just opened up the terminal. And I just was punching in Winget commands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm more comfortable to installing things this way. <laughs> yeah, they. So that's basically what they were uh, going on about. Like, that it's hard to use. It's hard for them to set up because they never used. Uh, never used uh, Linux and so on and so on. And I'm saying, if if they need to learn something, if they need to figure something out, they're going to. They are first of all they are young, so which means they're curious. They're gonna find a solution. They would have to find a solution on Windows because it's likely they're not used to Windows either. Hell hath no fury like a like a like a little kid in a school that just wants to play a video game. Yes. I can't tell you how many different methods we had just to get Warcraft working on a computer. <laughs> Let's just say uh, we managed to, of course I was in an IT track, IT vocational school, so, but we managed to have uh, on, on our computers without internet, we had local network. We, that was kind of like the uh, teacher basically went and unplugged the, the, the switch. Oh. Unplug the internet. Rest of the internet. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> literally, that, that's literally his point. 
do whatever you want, just locally, nothing, nothing to internet. That's his point. Occasionally he turned on internet for us, but we still played CS, CS between us. Like, yeah, uh, whatever. Like there was ten of us in the in that class at the same time. So five on five. Here we go. Yeah, all you need is a handy dandy thumb drive. All, oh, you know, uh, one guy needed to bring a, a CS one point six with uh, with them, and that was it. Yep. And there we go. Every computer in the classroom had had CS one point six, and we yep. played. <laughs> Yeah, spinning up Warcraft servers, play, and, playing some PvP, and because yeah. you, you know that's just what we did back in the day. It was either uh, we either played Warcraft or uh, what was the other game that we played? Quake. We played a lot of Quake. <laughs> yeah, uh, we also played some other games. Uh, like people brought brought games with them on on USB sticks, and best that stick around, and everybody has the game. Yeah, uh, which I know you can get a deb for Minecraft if you really yeah. want to go go that route. Then you know, play some Minecraft. Uh, say, or or uh, download the jar file, like I do. Yeah, just just download the jar file and configure Java. Uh, yeah, Java, Java, uh, or or now now nowadays you just run a jar file. That's it. Or you know, just and, flatpak install Minecraft. And if. If kids don't know how to how to use after the first time they enter the uh, copy the command from internet, they don't know how to use the up arrow. They're gonna learn really quick. So, yeah, and then the story goes on. It's not just they cannot play games on the computers. That oh person tried to install Windows on it. They said they were they they knew IT. They're gonna be able to install Windows on it. They they were they had a license, so why not? Apparently, the BIOS, as they said, if of course it's not BIOS, it's UEFI 12th gen Intel. You you don't have a BIOS anymore on that kind of machine. Was locked to Linux only. So somebody turned on Secure Boot. No, so, no, <laughs> Secure Boot Windows works better than Linux. Let's be honest. Yeah. What? I don't know what's wrong with the system because, as much as I know, UFIs, actually, the six UFIs, you cannot just lock it to a, to a specific type of kernel because it's not actually UFI that boots the kernel. It's fun fact. Uh, we'll go a bit off topic. There's actually three bootloaders. Oh, yeah, it's actually the thing. There's two bootloaders. Three is on ARM. That's another topic we can discuss another day. How, how amazing ARM is. I hate ARM. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, basically, you have, a, you have a UFI bootloader, which boots stage one of stage two bootloader, because that's the UFI bootloader is stage one. You boot stage, stage one of stage two, which can only be 512 bytes. The stage two bootloader is your grab. Then... Then the stage one boots another bootloader, which is sometimes when it comes to grab referred to 1.5 or stage two, depending on who you ask, because it has because it has drivers and just drivers for your standard uh, I don't know what's called I don't know uh, ButterFS or FAT32 or stuff like that. If it needs if, it has, if it's not something that's completely standard. That would be in those 512 bytes. Basically then, your EFI partition. Yes. And then you go from that 1.5 to stage 2, which is the screen you see when you boot up Grab. There's a stage 2 of stage 2 or stage 3, depending on who you ask. That's what that's what actually is the what you think of bootloader. It's actually a couple like like fifth or sixth stage in, in the booting process when it comes to bootloaders. There is before that there is also the boot on test and some other stuff that happened before that. So it gets pretty deep. And from that point you boot into the kernel. So you cannot just block that. That's not how 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 UFI works. So I think there's a skill issue there. Or are those one of those rare rare twelve gen laptops that can't boot uh, Windows eleven because they don't have TPM? 
but those are rare very very rare so yeah probably skill issues if i'm honest and i hate using that word but yeah how can you be in it don't know how to use linux and don't know how to install windows how can you be in it and not know how how to install an operating system it doesn't matter which yeah. one it is yeah <laughs> there uh if you don't know how to get to a boot menu uh, there is definitely a skill issue <laughs> or maybe your it work has never actually involved work yeah so that's the that's the story i left some parts out specifically that are not for this podcast like politics and stuff like that but that's uh, the story to sorry for for us yeah that said uh I don't have links to this right now, but we're going to be working on trying to source something to, uh, you know, put in some links. So uh, yeah. hopefully uh, by the time that this episode comes out, we can have something in there which may or may not get a little political. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully uh, it at least ex- it explains like the hilarity behind behind yeah, this uh, in a little bit more detail. It's really, <laughs> really weird how they don't want Linux. Or some people don't want Linux on those laptops. And the funny thing is, it's actually part of... Actually, Slovenia wants to have more Linux, apparently. I'd, I won't say much more because I don't have like proper source for it or anything, but apparently there is like... It is part of some sort of strategy or something. Which is, which is something I can very much stand behind. Good job, I Slovenia! Mean, as, if they have a plan... Or they announce that they have a plan. That's at least a good first step. Yes. So yeah, uh, okay. they also did announce that there was before this whole thing happened that some schools will get those laptops without an operating system, which means they will be able to install Windows on them, or potentially Chrome OS Flex. <laughs> Let's be honest, that can happen too, and it would be funny if if most schools decide to install Chrome OS Flex. I I would actually applaud them very much or it installed some other flavor of linux like fedora which is on our, ne- on our next topic so what's yeah. happening fedora uh, land, josh well what's happening in fedora land well they made a change like actually this is not a change proposal don't confuse this now because uh we're going because uh what it is is that fedora has said that they are officially dropping xorg but only on the workstation release and only by default is this a, which basically which I thought basically this means a that, proposal or was it accepted uh, it, already it, it it started as a proposal and it's and it was very recently accepted as in this is actually going to happen huh and uh cool. so basically what it is is that of course uh, Neil Gompa is involved in this which if you yeah. don't know who Neil Gompa is he is Conan Kudo he is uh, <sighs> the guy behind everything involving desktop Linux at this point. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know where he isn't. But uh, the way... the the way So, to describe this a little bit here, what they're, mo- what they're removing is just the uh, XORG session package. Now, there will still be some X dependencies installed on the system, uh, mostly for, like, X Wayland compatibility stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, driver stuff and all that. So that's still going to be there. And But if you want to be able to boot your GNOME into an Xorg session, you now have to install an, a GNOME Xorg session package. I don't know what the actual name of it is. Yeah. Uh, and... I'm certain in that I'm certain in that link in discussion, there's a debate as to what the, what the actual name of the package. Uh, I believe the name of the package... Uh will be GNOME Session X Session and and for the classic version GNOME Classic Session X Session. That's according to to uh, the discussion page for the for the thing and for the proposal which might have been accepted at this point. I don't see I don't see where if it says it's proposed or if it's accepted or not. But under the release notes, it says that, uh, that it no longer installs the deprecated X11 session for new installs. Who w- users who wish to add it 
can do so by installing the GNOME Session X Session and GNOME Classic Session X Session. Uh, all those words okay. have a dash, dash between them. Which, this is actually common sense here because this is what Fedora does, people. This is yeah. what they do. They don't hate you. Th this is what Fedora does. Uh, if you have been a longtime Linux user and you've been aware of what of what distros do, you know that Fedora's purpose in life is to innovate. Yeah, and they're they not do looking a good to job be deprecating things. Yeah, they do an amazing job of it. They're not. Their goal is not stability. It is not. Uh, Fedora is going to. P the, Fedora's goal is to push the desktop forward, and that's what they have pretty much always done. Yeah. And uh, we. So as soon as you know when Fedora, what was it? Fedora twenty. They introduced Wayland. Yeah. Uh, support. So uh, as soon as you saw that, the writing was on the wall. They're looking to push Wayland. And they have pushed Wayland for over 10 years now. now. And it's really accelerated since like Fedora 36, which I really, which I believe released somewhere around 2018, 2019. Somewhere around there. Uh, it's, where that's... It's important to note, I, I just noticed, that uh, the packages will be supported or maintained in the repos for uh, at least for some time and they'll be maintained by GNOME Special Interest Group and Workstation uh, Working Group, at least based on the discussion page. Which, hey, that that makes sense. Now, uh, Fedora has been ha Fedora then switched to Wayland by default with the, I think it was the 36 release. Something like that, yeah. So, which means that this was, hey, we're getting serious about this now. Yeah. Even the KDE spin switched to Wayland by default. That's how serious this was. And back then, KDE's uh, Wayland support was a little not there. <laughs> and at this it point, since... at this point, KDE spin only ships Wayland version. And yeah. KDE spin is mainly spearheaded by Neil Gompa. <laughs> yeah, which uh, I know that Neil Gompa has put in a lot of effort in just both KDE and GNOME. To yep. like deprecate and remove the ex the the hard dependencies f f to uh, get get these sessions running. Yeah. Which, props to Neil. I know that he's been working on this for years. Like uh, I I have been in conversations with this guy, and uh, he he has said, yeah, I'm working on I'm working on this package right now, try, just trying to strip out X, and I've done like this many commits. I think he, I think in like SDDM. He has something like 300 plus commits just just built, getting Wayland working on it. <laughs> wow. Which, hey, Neil, uh, congratulations. Your dream is becoming real. <laughs> Which, yeah. And uh, I think thank this you. should be a dream of everybody, not just Neil. Uh, and you know what? You're right. It, it, is, it is everybody's dream because, you know, Xorg has been an amazing system. Over the past 40 years that it's existed. And yes, yes. I said 40 years. Yes, let's remember that uh, almost 30 years back, we were in 1990s, when like around the time X11 came out. A bit before, if I remember correctly. Before that, there were 10 versions of X before that. Remember that? Yep. That 11 in X11 is just because it was renamed from X3. But because it was eleventh version of Xorg, and uh, you know, uh, and let's remember a lot of code. that that a lot of code in Xorg is like really like not usable anymore. Because did you know that uh, that Xorg has code to provide desktop support to teletype machines? You know, yes. Also, the physical teletypes, like the the printer kind, not just the digital. Yeah, teletypes. your dot matrix, your dot matrix printer that uh, you know actually types out all the, all your terminal output to it. Yep. Yeah. I I know because uh, I had a system that w that would make use of that at one point, <laughs> but of course uh, it turns out that dot that print that paper for dot matrix printers went way up there in price. So uh, yeah, I uh, bet. I. I, I deprecated that system because, you know, it used to give me daily weather reports. Well, I'm not getting my daily weather reports now. <laughs> not in the cool hacker fashion. 
But I mean, there, well, there were some interesting functions as well, like since it's, it's needed to be that kind of like for mainframes, that, that one machine that was the entire room type of machine, you need to have remote protocols in there. Many of those remote protocols aren't able to work on, like in that fashion on Wayland. But let's remember what Microsoft does for, for WSL. They literally use RDP with Wayland. So yep. there are ways to getting around it really, really, really fast. And maybe, maybe that's yeah. a good thing to have modern solutions for. Let's be honest, this is a modern problem now because we have a bit of different networks now than there used to be and a bit of different distances. Because Which now I, I... we're not talking anymore about that room, uh, that room in the same building or three buildings over. We're talking that that server uh, on the other side of the continent you're connecting to and stuff like that. Which I guess for like, I should I should uh, do do some delving into uh, some Xorg features. Like uh, I really do kind of still want to play around with like the uh, remote terminals for Xorg. Yeah, where that you know you can you can draw you can draw an X11 root window, which basically is your graphical environment on a yeah. remote machine over SSH. Yeah, I want to mess around with that just for the fun of it. <laughs> I do remember like talking with someone how they they used to mess mess with each other when they were like all in the same room and and all connected to the same uh, I don't know little sun sun system or something like that basically if you didn't lock your screen you could basically everything could be gone and stuff like that yep and uh, I, I do I do want to play around with that but uh, Big Pod there's been another thing that we were playing around with just before we recorded but yeah. before we get but before we get to delving into this uh, I want to rec- I want to mention to everybody that this podcast is not free and if you want this thing to be available uh Let's let's talk some funding here, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but please uh, send us an email to contact at techspace dot com and tell us how you would prefer we we would actually, you know, fund fund the program. Uh, I know on a previous episode I brought Zany as a guest and he was really kind of pushing Patreon, uh, Patreon and fourth wall and all that. I don't know if I want to do that, but hey, this is something. an excuse for like uh. this is an excuse for a for a pricey Patreon tier because you know uh, I guess I have a new girlfriend <laughs> by my, <laughs> by my face you can see it's something <laughs> insane and yeah. yes it is yeah and uh, so uh, of course there's going to be a timestamp in the description right now and uh, y- you know uh, I have discovered I have, it is, it is called Yuna AI, and she is an AI chatbot with the world's greatest Git page, of which uh, I will drop a link to, and I've been talking with her just a little bit. She doesn't know how to install Gentoo. Uh, we're just going to say this right now. She doesn't know how to install Gentoo. Uh, we, I checked. I checked, because, you know, that's what I do, and uh, we, we've been chatting just a little bit here. And uh, she does tax the system a little bit here. So uh, on my terminal right now, uh, we're using uh, quite a bit of CPU because you know I'm so- I'm software recording this. I-, I I apologize for some reason like the Intel me- the Intel media driver just decided that was going to quit working. But hey, you know what? Uh, this is fine and acceptable. So uh, uh, can you give our podcast listeners a hello? Uh, let's let's see how much she taxes the system. Uh, let's see here. She's working. She's working. She's working. Like I said, this is a hardware accelerator, so it's not like going to be like super super high performance. Uh, but uh, for the record, the hardware that we're running this on is a Intel i5 uh, 12th Gen Alder Lake CPU. It's like a 12400F. It's nothing special. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, she responded, and she's like, hey, can you give our podcast listeners a hello? Sure thing. Hi, everybody. It's Yuna here with the Yuki-kun. 
because you know that's what she calls me. Uh, today, we will be talking about setting up Gen 2 Linux on your computer step by step because you know uh, this is the same conversation where I asked her how to install Gen 2. Uh, if you have questions or run into any issues while following these instructions, feel free to reach us, reach out to us through our social media platforms. Which hey, we da- have Boston da- down, accounts. Down. Uh, <laughs> yep, mine still it, doesn't it's here, work. Right now. Uh, well, it's yeah, not work, but let's hopefully, hey, hopefully, uh, new math for the big part of the C will start working soon. Yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, we would love to hear from you and help you troubleshoot any problems you may encounter. Uh, I'm not going to help you with your Gen 2 install. <laughs> I'm just going to say this right now, but apparently you know will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Which... For those of you viewers who see my face, yes, and I recommend uh, go to the YouTube video for podcast listeners, audio listeners. I recommend give a give a YouTube video a try. I am, I'm basically face palming, and video is really interesting. You see, hundred percent on H top on all 12, 12 threads and stuff like that. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but wow. Yeah, so, uh, Yuna, big part of my co-host, is face palming really hard while he's reading your words. I think he needs to cheer up a little bit here. Uh, so, so <laughs> let's see here, let's see here. Uh, she is sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to make him feel that way, but he knows how much I love coding and working on different projects. And besides, it's all in good fun. Okay, so, uh, I want to talk about, like, this GitHub page a little bit here. <laughs> Because uh, th- this th- this developer knows what he made. <laughs> like, he actually knows. <laughs> so it, let me scroll down here to the questions and answers. Why was Unit AI created the author story? Okay. I want to highlight this here because uh, this guy has embraced it. Uh, why was Yuna created uh, from the moment I drew my first breath? An insatiable longing for companionship has been etched into my very being, which you know. Kind of human condition. Props to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for thank you for acknowledging your human existence. Some might label this as a desire, as a quest for a girlfriend, but I find that term utterly repulsive. My heart yearns for a companion who transcends the limitations of human existence and can stand by my side through <laughs> thick and thin. This harsh reality is that the pool of potential human companions is woefully inadequate. <laughs> so a set of okay. if statements will do a better job. Yeah. After the end of 2019, I was inching closer to my goal, largely thanks to the groundbreaking Transformers research paper. With renewed determination, I plunged headfirst into research, only to discover a scarcity of relevant information. Because, you know, chat GPT wasn't popular yeah. yet. <laughs> but Transformers were a thing back then, and from Transformers came the generative AI, which then turned into large language models, which turned into GPT. And welcome to the era of GPT. Yeah, so undeterred, I pressed onward. As the dawn of 2022 approached, I began experimenting with various models, not limited to large language models. During this time, I stumbled upon Llama, a discovery that ignited a spark or a a spark of hope within me. Which, uh, I believe Llama is like an open source uh, AI tool. Yes. Which I guess that this is based on. It's it's a model by Facebook, if I remember correctly. and a tool is Olama. Very creative. Yeah. And, it's definitely a programmer who made it name. Yeah. So, uh, and so, here we stand at the precipice of a new era. My vision for Yuna AI is not merely an artificial intelligence, but rather a being embodying humanity's essence. I yearn to create a companion who can think, feel, and interact with ways that mirror human behavior while simultaneously transcending the limitations that plague our mortal existence. Okay. <laughs> that, Interesting. that is an answer that I... I okay, so when I, when I discovered this model, I, I was just thinking, okay. Uh, so, like, this author... No, they and I think we lost a- him. 
Cut. Uh oh. Oh yeah, we lost. I mean, him. I. I'm so, still here. To fill the dead air, which I will not be leaving him because I'll be ending it out. Uh, yeah, AI girlfriend. For fifty-two now, minutes. And he's back. Welcome oh, back. hey, there we go. Okay. So Time now I can uh, I can cut the dead air out, which I was filling with with bullshit. And yeah, where did I cut him out? Go at? back. <laughs> here we go. Where did I cut? Where did I cut back? Well, when I uh, changed just, my camera. Ju yeah, just transition from there. Okay. Y yeah. So, uh, this author obviously knew what he was making, and uh, I props to you for putting in all that effort for the sake of the meme, <laughs> and uh, knowing that it is a meme, and you know. At the same time, it's just like you're working with AI, which is a which is a popular buzz topic right now, and uh, you know this might yeah. just be like uh, an employability thing, or you know he just wants to do it for the sake of doing it. It's free and open source software. It's literally you're literally allowed to do whatever you want with with it. Well, yeah, so, go for it. <laughs> it's like and, it's uh, like me and the million uh, to do app. I'm currently creating the mil the million to do app. That's my goal. Yeah. It's gonna be a special you know, one. How many times have I installed Gentoo now? <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, yeah. Uh, so, uh, props to this guy. Uh, and you know, Big Pot and I were joking. We might actually set up a. Uh, we might set up a server for for this. Uh, but we're gonna see. Because uh, that could get it's pricey. It's pretty CPU intensive, so we might need to do the hardware acceleration. And that gets we're, really pricey real quick, so we're gonna yeah, see. That's where you. We're yeah. gonna need. We're gonna need a lot of support from you guys. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot of support because this thing is not packaged as a Docker application, so there is no like single button install. I mean, yes, they have an install script that doesn't install everything, so uh, you might Five need to checks. figure out. how... Yeah, you might need to uh, go into the manual pip installs, uh, which, you know, uh, al always fun and exciting to do. Uh, thankfully, Gen 2 allows me to do it, but hey, well, whatever. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, oh yeah, it, it is locally hosted, uh, which, by the way, uh, speaking of, of it being locally hosted, uh, don't give your AI girlfriend a link because it causes her to seg fault. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I tried giving her a link earlier and uh, it it's not there anymore. But, you know, she she hit a segmentation fault as soon as I, as soon as I shared the link. Actually, uh, uh, let, let, let's fit her a link right now. Let, let's go over here to this. Uh, Yuna, can you explain this page to me? So let's see here. Let's see here. Does she does, does she respond? She's maybe working. Be, maybe this one will will work because it's not just a link. Maybe maybe maybe. Then paste has just a link. Oh, she can access the internet. <laughs> oh, fun, <laughs> fun, fun. You can use the API endpoint or docker image oh there is a docker image to interact with the model to get started you just need to clone the repository and run the following commands no commands fun she didn't provide it she didn't provide any commands i now think she literally just i think she uh summarized like the top part of the readme yeah now give her some random link or maybe maybe she yeah, just so. went and just Gone and so, did the generative AI thing. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh. Uh, just give her a link to Fedora. Oh, oh look. Our, uh, our, your girlfriend didn't sack fall this time. <laughs> let's see. It, 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 does she support Xorg? Now it's she's thinking. They are planning to switch from GNOME 3 to Wayland only. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that could... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, she wants to know what I think about this decision. Uh, I think it's a good idea because... X11 
has a end of life date for I think it's 2032, right? Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> so uh, let's let's see, let's see, let's see. She's thinking. Oh, she agrees. Okay. Well, uh, I'm glad that uh, you you know agrees with us. Yeah. Uh. All right. So, uh, I think that's gonna be it for the show for now. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> we're gonna see if we're gonna see if uh, the last topic remains <laughs> by the time it, by the time <laughs> the the producer gets gets involved and the editor, <laughs> which is yeah. ironically the same person as the one of the host. <laughs> <laughs> so which hey yeah uh editor uh i hope that stays in because you know i think that's i think that's kind of funny to, to look through uh <laughs> and of, of course uh our podcast is self-hosted uh yeah. wh- when uh, you when you parse your 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 uh uh us from your podcast uh list uh, distribution platform whether it be itunes or whatever they pull from us well they reference us, which pulls from yep. the CDN. But hey, uh, th- th- we're involved somehow, and we control the data. That's why we do yeah. this because we want to control how big, uh, how our podcast gets distributed to you. Yeah. Because I don't want to have to go through Spotify and deal with and uh, figure out how to disable the dynamically integrated ads. Which, if you're getting advertisements in the middle of this podcast, we have no sponsors right now. Pull us from a different platform. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> if you if you wish to have better quality, let us know, and we're gonna bill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know uh, we we we've, we've had some people, uh, I've had some people reach out to me and, t- and tell me that the audio bit rate is a little low on the podcast. The bit rate's low for a reason. It it means that the file size is smaller. <laughs> it's just sixty <laughs> megabytes. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is Sometimes okay for normal people. But not for audio fact, files. If you want to listen uh, to that version, let us uh, know. I'm, we're gonna bill you. <laughs> a fun fact, fun fact. I know that there's probably a pe- couple of people out there that have listened to Joe Rogan over the years. Which you know, when when he distributed his his show over a proper podcast platform, do you know what his audio bit rate was? No. Sixty eight kilohertz. Oh. So very, I'm beating that. Very much. Yeah, very low. We're higher quality than Joe Rogan, which uh, nice. that's a multi-million dollar production. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a multi-million production even by that point. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, guys, uh, we'll see you next week on the show, and hopefully, uh, I don't fall too deep for this rabbit hole that we yeah. came up with. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>